Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Usama bin Johari and my metric number is 067357. As the first presenter, I will present on the introduction. First of all, the purpose of this assignment is to analyze credit risk management for Islamic banks especially in Malaysia. For information, credit risk management is closely related to the bank operations including loan and deposit transaction. Bank operations by Islamic banks are exposed to the risk of losers in the market due to the failure of borrower to fulfill the agreement as in his contract. In addition, the main causes of failure of banking institution are also due to the lack of banking skills, broken regulations, mismanagement from superior and abuse of power in the company. In general, credit risk can be divided into two parts, namely systematic credit risk and unsystematic credit risk. Systematic risk means that the possibility of losers that are closely related to the market conditions, while unsystematic risk means that involving certain industries and security. This assignment are written in sequence starting from literature review, research methodology, data findings, and finally, conclusion based on the findings of study. Assalamualaikum. My name is Muhammad Zami Hakim. My metric number is 067356. So for the literature review, the concept of financial risk management has evolved. Islamic banking refers to a system based on Islamic law and also has Sharia aspect. Uh, whereas credit risk is the potential for loss due to the borrower's inability to make loan repayment as agreed. Risk is defined as an exposure with an uncertain outcome. And the most significant risk is credit risk. So for the background, credit risk is the oldest and also most major risk that bank possesses by consequence of its very nature of the business. Risk management in banking became crucial after the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision BCBS published the core principle for effective banking supervision in 1997. So for the objective, as we know, objective can provide a clear first impression. Uh, the primary objective of credit risk management are to implement credit approval processes that allow for risk evaluation as well as processes for effective risk analysis, monitoring and measurement. So integrated risk management has become a crucial phenomenon for the banking industry in the future. So for the research methodology, uh, based on the study, we use internet and journal article resources to obtain information about this assignment. Uh, among the journal articles visited to obtain information are uh, the credit risk in Islamic banking and finance. So reference from these journal article sources can help us obtain more extensive and up-to-date information on the scope of research. The accessibility of using the internet allows us to obtain information on credit risk management for Islamic Bank. Our searching for reference are based on websites such as Emerald Insight, Blog and ResearchGate. Islamic banks get their profits through providing facilities to their customer. But unlike social banks, they do not lend money, except in one case, Kat Hassan, where the bank lends money to a customer who is in difficult. This lending free from interest and part of bank social activities. In order to get profits, Islamic Bank use many tools such as Musharrokah, Mudarobah, Istisna, Salam, Ijarah, and Murabaha. These are also the main contracts used by Islamic banks for providing facilities to their customers. In each contract, Islamic banks take many risks but the major one is credit risk. Credit risk can be defined as the probability of the contract's failure to fulfill its engagement at time. I will explain a few examples of credit risk in contracts that are used by Islamic banks and how to manage them. 
Credit risk in Ijara happens when rent is not paid on time or not at all. The solution is the bank might include a condition in the contract stating that if there is a payment default, the customer is legally required to pay a penalty. Credit risk in Istisna can be a failure of deliver. The solution is contract may include a penalty provision to reduce counterparty risk unless the failure is due to the reasons beyond under manufacturer's control. Credit risk happen when the commodity is not delivered on time. If indeed the default is temporary, then the bank can either wait until the commodities become ready or terminate the contract and recover its loss if the other party is not in a difficult situation. Islamic banks are permitted to take a security such as a guarantee or mortgage from the opposite party. Islamic banking's debts are not the same as those held by the conventional banks. And for the first point, this includes the inability of increase in the debt. And as we all know, traditional bank loans contain payback terms and the debtor is required to repay the loan within those terms. If he delays this payment without the bank's approval, he is deemed a defaulter. If he misses a payment or defaults, the debt grows in proportion to the time he has been overdue and if the interest is paid on a regular basis, the loan is referred to as a performing debt and the bank is not authorized to significantly raise the total amount by applying extra charges if a borrower if a borrower has purchased property from the bank through the use of murabaha, ijarah and istisna contract and the bank is not allowed to profit from this flow by reporting it as a source of income. Islamic banks take further measures to limit the consequence of this issue upon its profitability. And next, the impact of contract form on the risk level. So, the main distinction between Islamic and regular banks is that traditional banks are operating on the basis of loans. The connection between the bank and the client is one of the parties to the contract regardless of its transaction names. Sales, partnerships and renting are how the Islamic banks conduct the business. Others, while others had interpreted this to mean that such risk in Islamic banking is by default higher than in traditional banks. But such perspective is wrong because loans cannot be said to be less to be less risky than sales, partnerships and leasing. Now we will move on to the prohibition of trading in debts. In Islamic law, it is illegal to trade a debt for less than its face value to someone other than the person from whom it is due before it matures. This effectively bans debt trading. As a result, Islamic banks cannot deal in bill discounting as they are dealing in riba. More crucially, these banks are unable to rely on the sale of debts on their books to other parties to shift debts. And for the last point, which is the conditional discounting is not permitted. Several people would rather pay off their debts earlier and this is frequently the best option for the borrowers and the banks. They achieve this by relying on the lending contracts provisions which specify the discounted price the consumer will receive if they do so. In the event of Murabaha contract, this procedure is prohibited. Though there is nothing wrong prevent debtors from paying their debts early and there is nothing odd with granting a discount for immediate payment. But this is not permitted in the agreement. Most people believe this way could put the bank at risk. But I think this is not the case. And that's all from me. So we will move on to the next presenter. The most important risk a bank faces in its engagement with wealth owners is credit risk. Credit risk refers to a debtor's ability to repay a loan within time frames and terms. If the debtor does not fulfill his commitments, the creditor will suffer a loss and the bank will be exposed to risk. Credit risk is one of the most serious threats to a bank viability. 
the amount of bad debt in Islamic banking is growing to this degree. The bankers have said that there is a lack of understanding of the risk associated with Islamic banking. This discrepancy warrants fresh research into why Islamic banking is seeing an increase in poor loans and high credit risk. This requires looking at the elements that influence the credit risk in Islamic banking. It's vital to recognize these elements early on in order to take the necessary safeguards and preventative steps to maintain Islamic banking's viability and long-term development. On the resource side, speculation, whose assets are Sharia-based, can be embraced as beneficiary methods of supporting Mudoroba, Musharaka, Murabaha, Istisna, Salam, and Ijara are examples of fixed pay funding techniques. Surprisingly, its stores might be retained as current records or in speculative accounts when it comes to obligation. Current record contributors get their stores on the price while speculation investors in Islamic banks are compensated with the potential chance to give the bank information about the venture's benefits and business. Risk analysis importance in financial usage. The purpose of risk analysis is not to eliminate risk because it is an impossible task but to quantify the risk so that the individual making the decision receives compensation that is proportional to the level of risk he is incurring. Move on to human life has always included risk management. Generations of people face the following threats as well as strove to achieve the same goals to the best of their abilities in the same way that people today recognize the need of reducing risk. The reasons for Islamic banks having higher risk. Islamic banks are widely thought to be more credit risky than conventional banks. Islamic banks have more credit risk than conventional banks in their current form since they lack Sharia compliant instruments for dealing with liability transactions. Islamic banks' ability is they can deal with credit and interest risk. They have a restricted number of options for managing liabilities and assets. The actual reason for this is the frequent usage of murabaha as a type of financial intermediary. Murabaha contracts prevent it. Islamic banks from getting the benefits of Mudarabah contracts and other categories of contract through Ijarah and Musharaka. Musharaka and Mudarabah, without a doubt, present greater moral hazard dangers in their various forms. Finally, I will continue the presentation with the last part, which is the conclusion of this research. The most important info in this assignment is that credit risk is the main cause of the bank business failure, including Islamic banks. The main contracts used by the Islamic banks to provide service to customers such as Musharaka, Mudaraba, Istisna, Salam, Ijara, and Murabaha have certain risks according to the service offered. The success of Islamic financial institution will be determined by their ability to manage risks. Therefore, systematic and structural management such as implementation of practical controls and operational risk management is able to reduce the risk that exists in Islamic banking organization and in turn improve the performance of Islamic banks. <laughs>